Oh, g'day scrappers, welcome to part two of the e-waste pickup with lots of PCs. Okay, so here we go, I'm going to start unloading this van and um, seeing what we actually ended up getting and we'll have a look at some of the uh, actual um, servers here. Uh, there might be a few interesting ones to have a look at, but um, yeah, and, and just one thing I wanted to mention about this camera is these new GoPro 6s, the, um, the microphones on these are really, really sensitive. So all I need to do is just touch it or the camera needs to kind of slide around a little bit um, and it makes terrible noise and it's nothing like the old GoPros. Um, so I had to, in part one, uh, I was doing a lot of uh, I took a lot of video while I was driving and uh, I had to cut most of it out because it was just really hard to, you know, there was vibration and all kinds of noises. So I'm just getting used to the GoPro and I think I've got the solution. I'm just going to have to get a an external microphone so it cuts out the microphone from the uh, actual camera because, so I'll just um, use my finger and I'll just rub across the top. <laughs> You probably hear that it's really sensitive picks up this tiniest little thing uh when i was first testing out the, the the camera a mosquito flew by and i could actually hear the mosquito really loud that's how sensitive the camera uh, microphone is so um yeah and it's got three microphones around it so it doesn't matter where you touch it like i touch it at the front here and it just picks up so I'm just trying to get used to the the microphone and how it works, uh, change the settings, but I'm just waiting on an external microphone before I start using this out and about more often. It's okay once it's on a tripod, even though, even when I turn the tripod, it actually, you know, picks up. So there's a lot of background noise, unfortunately, and uh, hopefully um, I've got a new strap on, so hopefully this will... Uh, at least make this video a little bit more um, easier to listen to. So anyway, so, okay. It's going to take a little while to unload this van because I've s squashed in monitors in between and, um, well, I might as well start on this side because everything's going to fall out. I had to squeeze a whole lot in as I showed in the first video. Okay, just a whole heap of monitors. So even the, um, I had to put some server blades or racks, whatever you want to call them here, in the side. Put monitors wherever I could. As you can see, the uh, PCs are right up to the roof. Couldn't get any more in. So um, yeah, slowly. Good thing these monitors are just basically uh, junk monitors, most of them, they're all faulty, and uh, the, the last one that I got, so that's all scratched up, and um, yeah, I've taken one out already, and I've put that uh, aside, because I might keep that monitor, um, I do have a bit of a, a little collection of monitors uh, with the old style, VGA um, just in case I want to put together a couple of old PCs and so I've got uh, matching monitors and so on I've pretty much I've done that with every technology the old CRT TVs to match up with old IBM um, computers that I keep and so on but yeah, so I've, and I also took out a couple of things. I took out my trolley out of this, obviously. So I've got uh, UPSs and a PC and some monitors in the front here as well. But yeah, it's just going to be slowly, but surely. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just give it, do a little bit of a count as to um, how many PCs I picked up because when I got the job 
apparently there was there was meant to be about 40 PCs. So um, I'm pretty sure there's 40 at least 40 PCs in there. But it's uh, the most exciting thing is these unexpected servers. Um, some of them the the uh, the covers fell off and I just sort of squeezed the covers in but I'll find them and I'll put them back together this one I might just uh, take this one inside Whew. So yeah, they're pretty heavy. I can see some nice copper heat sinks here. So that's a good start. Two, two really nice chunky heat sinks. You know, so there's about six dollars value just there in in uh, copper recovery. But the uh, the thing with this place is that all the hard drives have been removed. So no hard drives. Um, the last time I picked up from this place, they gave me a box of hard drives that were all smashed up and pulled apart. So <laughs> they're very particular with that. You'll find with places that uh, actually um, deal with PCs, like these are ex-client PCs, they've built for them and then they've replaced because they've, you know, either gone too old or, or broken down or whatever so they protect their own clients obviously it's a smart thing to do because they remove so they remove all the hard drives and not only do they remove the hard drives but they also make sure that um every um like windows sticker they remove them so you can see down here that Windows um, identification serial number sticker, they remove all them too. So, an added security for their clients. So, these guys are about the um, most efficient in as far as, you know, or the most caring as far as um, protecting their own clients. So, you know, really good. Obviously, I don't, I don't use the stickers. You're not allowed to anyway. It's illegal. Um, so... They just go to scrap metal but um yeah um even though i get the hard drives i can get the hard drives destroyed um some people just prefer to uh, do it themselves um, you know some places just remove the hard drives and they send it to an actual proper hard drive destruction service um i think these guys actually destroy the hard drives themselves um they don't really trust anyone you know so this this one here is a HP Pavilion ML350. It's got the Intel Xeon. Good. You know, obviously with the some of the CPUs are worth it, but these things here is uh, one of the things that I, I really want is the switching power supplies, even though we've got uh, really nice <laughs> gold fingers. Um, a lot of these power supply units can sell second hand uh, so before I scrap anything out I usually try and plug them in and just make sure that they power on and uh, if they power on the fans are working everything's going I sell these and uh, especially HP and Dell even IBM ones they sell really well really quickly because uh, you know they break down and people want them so bear with me So all the servers, um, I'll bring them right into the back under cover because they're still got to be tested first as far as all oh, the power supply units need to be tested. Um, whereas the PCs, I could just stack them up because they're all going to just get completely recycled straight off the bat. Um, this one here doesn't seem to have a brand name. But it's a pretty awesome looking server, this. And 
it's only got a, a mounted power supply unit so they're a little bit different but I can still test them out this one's got a few couple of uh, slot cards in there so um, yeah it um, it might be uh, I thought it might be an IBM I know there are some IBMs in there oh and this one here okay again it looks like it's just a manufactured one this uh, a generic tower and kind of made to order it's uh, missing the two slot cards one of those kind of power supply units all right and they're all servers so they're the unexpected so when you saw the part one video when i finished up where i thought i finished up i had to move all those towers that were here and squish them up right up to the top and right in so i could fit all these servers so this geez you know quite a lot of servers here all right and this is the the last thing i actually put in the van it was a it's a ups and it's, yeah it's only like barely two inches tall so it's a real slimline ups um looking forward to having a look at this one because it's going to have really nice slimline batteries in this and uh it might even be a ups to put aside if i can fix the cover <laughs> all right So yeah, for now these servers are going to just sit under cover here. Until I can sort them out. Okay. It's, um, yeah. Well, there is one hard drive in that. And uh, what I did promise them is that if there are any hard drives, I was going to give them back to them so i'm glad i found that one because uh, when i go back there next uh, week to do that uh, smaller pickup because i just didn't have enough room i'll give them back the hard drives that's part of the deal you know if i'm uh, if i found any hard drives i'm going to give them back that way uh, my conscience is clear too because uh, because they're so strict on their hard drives um, I want to make sure they that none you know sorry about that this sound I'm sure you know I've moved the camera a little bit and it's going to make that noise So I've got it on wide angle at the moment. I'm not sure if it's just too wide. Um, I'll just do a bit of this video and uh, I'll go and check it out and see. This one, this is the IBM server. A real big one. Uh, really, really happy with this one. It's got a couple of nice power supply units in there. We can... Um, probably easily sell if if they work so we'll check them oh and that's a real heavy one i had similar servers like this uh a few weeks ago with the uh sort of like the uh, angled front but these ones are super long still got the key in it too cool another kind of yeah this is kind of would have would have it is a servo it's got a huge power supply unit in it 
but um, it's only a single CPU server. So the motherboards in these just go as normal motherboards. They don't really go as server motherboards, even though the actual unit is a server. So yeah, oh well. And it seems like a bit of, you know, the RAM has been taken out a lot of these, you know, well, that's just how it goes, but that's all right, because I, I generally don't sell much RAM, because you, I don't really get big enough RAM, like 4 gig or 8 gig RAM, it's usually 1 and 2 gig, but again, we've got nice power supply units. And so, you know, the first point of call is to see if they work. And, you know, like power supply units aren't a problem because they're not, you know, they don't hold data. And, well, nothing in here doesn't, holds any data because obviously the hard drives are taken out and that's the only thing that does hold data. All right. But with every item that I remove out of this, the back of this van, it's just going to relieve the pressure off the, off the back wheels. So, and these, these server racks here are super heavy, so it'd be good to get them out. Uh, PC, yeah, here's our first PC. Okay. So as you can see, with uh, picking up, you know, you know, it's a, it's a great pickup, obviously, but you know, it, it does take time. You know, it was about a oh two and a half hour round trip to drive there, pick it all up, drive back, and now you know, you know, I'm going to spend another hour and a half slowly unloading this stacking things away and um yeah so it does take time and obviously everything still needs to be scrapped out and recycled properly so it's our first pc so there's still a lot of um time in this so it's it's not all just uh um, you know, yeah, you see the great stuff, but, you know, you've still got to understand that there's a lot of time, um, needed to put into this stuff to, in order to get the value. And so, if you're basing it on hourly rate, you know, well, um, the stuff that we scrap is not very, you know, it's not the best hourly rate. It's it's pretty good. If you get big pickups like this every week, um, you'll do well. Uh, but, um, you know, that's why we heavily rely on selling some items like those power supply units, etc. You know, some of these power supply units... You know, can get, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, say about $30, $30 up to about $60 each. You know, um, if they don't sell for $30, uh, I just see what they're selling for on eBay. And if, if they're only selling for like $15 or $20, you know, I, I really don't bother because... Um, you know, it's a lot of work for for 20 bucks and you still got to pay eBay fees and PayPal fees. So you're only getting, you know, $14 out of it or something like that. And um, in a lot of cases, those cheap ones don't really sell anyway. So I end up having piles of them and they don't do anything, you know. Um, whereas the more expensive ones, the ones that sell for 35 and 45 and 55 they just seem to sell easily and you know i can um, list them and have them sold in within two weeks they're all gone 
you know, so that's what I like about the, the better ones. Here's some servo blades again. So again, a couple of okay um, power supply units. Okay. All right. This one looks like a real nice server. It's got ah, they're screwed in. I'm going to have to take them out. But we've got a couple of uh, network cards here. So. Bit more value. Yeah, it looks like a, a known, no name kind of version. So it's again, it's one of those ones that they just put together themselves according to their clients' uh, requirements. Oh, well, that's good. We've taken a bit of pressure off the back now. And. All right. Oh, it's pretty bright. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll continue on, and I'll keep keep uh, dragging everything out, and then we'll do the big count and see what we actually got from this pickup. But yeah, as I said, like see here, there's all the uh, RAM's been taken out, so you know. What do you do? You know, you just take whatever you can get, but at least it's a dual uh, dual CPU server. You know, so we've got two CPUs in there, and we've got the um, copper heat sinks, motherboard, a few little boards, some big fans. Um, we know we've got this all this wiring system from the power supply unit external. But yeah, still got to test them out. This is a IBM IBM server blade system X3 3250. That'll be good. Only a low profile one. All right. Um, see if we can get some of these PCs out. Yeah, but if I knew that there were servers, I certainly would have put them in first. Because, uh, as I mentioned, you know, that a lot of these, you know, or all of these PCs have had their hard drives taken out. So we still got everything else, but um, you know some of them have had their power supply units taken out as well. So I would have preferred to uh, get the servers in and then throwing all these PCs at the back, and it would have been uh, a lot more comfortable to um, drive back anyway. Always try and stack the PCs neatly. Two more servers. So it's certainly going to keep me in um, work for a little while. Uh, but I wouldn't complain if I get a, you know, a few more pickups next week.
God, it doesn't even look like we've even made a start, does it? Okay. All right. Oh, I want to get this server out here too. This one was really hard to get in. I had to squeeze it in. It's easy now. Okay. Okay. More of these big box servers. Yeah, these ones should be good. Get rid of this. Okay. All right. Well, I think, yeah. I'll keep going and uh, recharge my camera. And we see what we end up with. I think there's about, at least, there might be about eight of these big boxy ones. That's good. Found the door for this server. Okay, well, we've finally emptied the van, so all good there. Took me over an hour, but I did it nice and slowly, so main thing is the job done there. So what did we end up getting from that pickup? Well, I expected, they said about 40 PCs ended up being 70, 72 PCs or something. A um, couple of them missing their covers and stuff, but uh, yeah, quite a uh, interesting um, mix of PCs, different, you know, um, different brand towers. Seems to be a lot of generic towers simply because, um, you know, they these are kind of all custom kind of PCs. So um, there's a few brand names, but yeah, most of all these are all generic. But yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, wow, 72 PCs. A whole bunch of uh, nice, the HP Compaq small form factors. I, I don't mind these small form factors. Um, they're a little bit more fiddly to scrap out, but they pack, uh, you know, a lot of punch in a, a small PC. They actually weigh heavier than one of these big towers. So uh, two different varieties. You've got the black cover and the silver color. But uh, yeah, well, the, the silver ones, they're a little bit older. They run the Windows XP and the black ones are uh some of them have got windows yeah mostly windows vista and uh running uh core 2 v pros so yeah it's uh 72 pcs so uh, I, I was pretty happy at uh on the way there i you know i thought oh well i'm going to go and pick up 40 PCs and uh, so 72 is is a nice little bonus um, uh, what do I get I've got quite a few monitors there's still a lot more monitors left that I'm picking up next week from 4, 6 8 10 uh, about 20 odd monitors so a um, bit of work there to recycle them but uh, yeah um, there's probably another 20 monitors to go next week and a few more servers and hopefully by then there's going to be a little bit more stuff maybe some cables and some more PCs I got this kind of like a um, 
much like like a, a server or a network kind of thing. It looks, uh, you know, it looks pretty uh, decent from the outside, but there's not a lot in it. Still got a motherboard, a slot card. Still got the CPU in there. The RAM's been taken out, but it's a, a pretty decent sized motherboard. And, uh, you know, just a floppy in the DVD. And the other side looks like quite a nice um, power supply unit here. It's got the, uh, you know, the, the fancy cabling. So yeah, that's not bad. Interesting. It might be a good power supply unit. Um, so our servers, those big boxy servers. So I did get eight of them, and these are the servers that are actually uh, still left over, mostly. So uh, I can expect to get a few more of them next week. So yeah, eight nice big fat chunky servers. Uh, really good there. Um, my usual thing, I, I, I must be a magnet to these uh, Lenovo ThinkPad docking stations for uh, laptops. Um, I'll keep, you know, I will keep a few, but uh, I, I already have got good stockpiles of this, uh, but mostly the ones I keep, um, I keep, you know, ThinkPad, but mostly the genuine IBM ones because I usually have laptops in my collection to match them. I don't really keep a Lenovo laptops, so there's no real point in these. Um, you know, they can sell for a few bucks, not a great deal, so uh, I'm not, you know, getting excited about these. I'll probably just uh, scrap, them, scrap them out and recycle them and, and stuff. Um, the one little beauty that I got is this tiny little, and it's the first one I've actually ever gotten. All right, check out this little thing. Okay, it's a um, HP ProLiant micro server. It's the first micro server that I've ever gotten. Sorry, Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, um, never gotten a micro server before. I didn't even know they actually existed. So this is a cute little box. Um, looks like it's you know been well used. It's quite a bit of dust in there, um, but it you know the PCIe card, you know or the um, the uh, monitor card there is uh, you know it's a late model one, so you know it's up to date. So it. Might be interesting to see if this works. It's still got the keys. <laughs> but yeah, it might just be interesting to see if this actually works. And um, uh, don't know what to do with it, but I might just put it into my collection as uh, just an oddball uh, piece. If not, um, you know, if it doesn't work or it shows up really faulty or something, I'll, I'll just... You know, it'll be a good little item to scrap out anyway, you know. I've never scrapped out a micro server, I don't think. I can't remember. Maybe in the early days, but certainly nothing uh, in the last year or two. Um, just a whole bunch of power supplies and all that that came with the... Uh, the um, uh, whatever they are. Uh, a loose motherboard. It's uh, probably... It was probably brand new and it hasn't even been used. Uh, don't know if that CPU relates to the type of motherboard. Could be. Uh, but it's not really any good to me like that. Um, just been thrown around and all that loose. Um, I've got a couple of laptops. Nice HP. That looks all right. ProBook, so the HP ProBooks are pretty good. Got this nice little Asus, but it's been sort of ripped apart. So not a great deal there, but 
I think that's the motherboard. And uh, yeah, it is. And so you got the CPU on board here. And not much of a heatsink at all. It's just, you know, that's the smallest laptop motherboard or the most unusual one that I've seen. It's uh, obviously faulty. But uh, still, I might scrap it out. It's got a nice aluminium back. So, yeah, just a tiny little... Uh, yeah, don't know the model number, but uh, yeah, and then the uh, servers, um, there's, uh, what is there, two, four, six, two, four, eight, there's ten of these oddball servers, so um, some of them got that really nice IBM one and the other really big one, um, yeah, there's a few real good ones here, so all I'm going to do here is first just uh, Put them all on the bench and test out um, each power supply unit as I go. And I also got that thin um, UPS that I'll have a look at. I got another UPS, one of the little box UPSs here. And I thought this was a UPS, but it's just a UPS battery. It's a twin battery. It says on the box that it's uh, faulty. So there's no point in trying to test it out or see, you know, it's a, it's a twin battery, but it's really, you know, quite a big size. It's got a lot of weight in there, so there's good scrap value there just alone. Um, so that's, a, that's good. You know, batteries are just basically cash, you know, easy to sell. And in here, there's very heavy little power supply unit, this. This one might be worth keeping for... Uh, a rainy day just uh, test it out but it looks like it's uh, you know a pretty good one you know it wouldn't be the best kind but uh, the only thing with these is usually the batteries are swollen and they're worn out and you know it's pretty expensive to put new batteries in them um, so if I can't get it working and you know test it with the batteries in there it's not worth getting new batteries and then only finding that there's faults in other parts so you've got to be careful with the UPSs so there you go guys um, yeah pretty pretty stoked with that so I've got 10 mixed um, servers and eight of these chunkies with more to come so what's that 18 uh, plus this if you add this 19 servers you know, well, it is a server, but uh, I love it. Just a gorgeous little, little tiny little thing. Um, yeah, if it works, you know, might be worth upgrading and, um, you know, who knows? Someone might, uh, you know, want it, might come in handy for someone, you know, rather than just scrapping it out and getting very little value. But if not, uh, it'll just give me another thing to scrap out on video. But yeah. Very happy with uh, 72 PCs. Got a lot of work ahead of me. And uh, once I'm finished with all of these, uh, the towels will all just go to scrap metal. They're nothing special. There's no real super duper towers here. Um, I just want what's inside. A couple of interesting ones down the bottom, but yeah, nothing, nothing really special. Um, I've had these ones before, the Shaw towers before so yeah looks like there's about 10 of them around and yeah interesting and it's just some PCs to scrap out there were a couple these two white ones here um, one of them looks reasonably vintage or th they both kind of look a little bit vintage so one's got a zip drive in it so, um, you know, they might have decent, you know, at least we get some decent CPUs out of there, maybe. You know, hopefully a ceramic, maybe. But if not ceramic, I'd imagine most likely it's going to be a green fibre, but still, they're okay. Yeah, I really like the HP small formats. As I said, they pack a lot of punch. They're really nice and heavy for their size. And, uh, yeah. Oh, well, guys, 
Well, that was it. That was the uh, pickup from the other day. And I finally got it all unloaded and stacked away, ready for the next uh, stage. So these PCs will just sit there for a while until um, I finish off all these towers, uh, all the servers, to get them out of the way here from the under undercover area. But yeah, as I was saying, I, I keep them undercover until I can test them, uh, test the uh, power supply units and stuff, you know, just in case it rains. Uh, I want to, you know, because as you imagine, you know, you take out the power supply units, say these two, if they sell for $30 each, well, that's $60 for two power supply units, you know. And so I've already made my money from, um, you know, from scrapping it out. There's no hard drives in there, so it's, you know, I don't have hard drives for these, it, you know, so that's not my thing. I'm a recycler, I'm not a PC repairman, so... Um, this, it's pointless and there's no RAM and so it's pointless trying to test them out to see if they're working These are just for recycling purely, but at least you know if I can get $30 for each of these um, Power supply units. Well, there's 60 bucks and yeah, you know if you multiply that by you know say if, uh, just five of these um, Well should get yeah, if, if five of these servers have a uh, good power supply units, then you know, you know, get a few hundred bucks there, and that sort of um, starts the uh, you know the process off in making a bit of money out of it, you know, and, uh, and that's what it's all about at the end. And um, these ones will be good, and yeah, can't wait. Hopefully, there's there's a few more hidden away when I go and pick some more up next week. And hopefully I'll get a decent load, at least half a van, that'll be really good. So that was fun. It was a good day today, good pickup. Hopefully we get a few more of these in the next coming weeks to keep me going. Because always looking for more scrap, just running out of scrap and stuff. You know, it's hard to keep up with uh, a lot of scrap. Um, but, you know, I really hope I get a few pickups before I actually start scrapping these ones out. And, you know, to really load myself up in fact before i even do these you know I'll, I'll be processing all the monitors as well uh i like to keep my monitors under control because you, you build up too many and uh yeah it turns out into a bit of a nightmare when you've got to start scrapping whereas pcs don't bother me because i use the pc empty towers for um um, throwing scrap metal in there so as I'm doing other things smaller items um, and I'm you know got small pieces of steel and screws and nuts and bolts and all that kind of thing you know I fill up the towers and that way when I take it to a scrap metal yard you know they don't just weigh you know three kilos they weigh 15 kilos or something you know so um, that's the whole idea uh, so I don't mind scrapping them as as I as I um, scrap other stuff. That way, each one will get filled up. But anyway, that's enough for me for today. I'll um, shut up shop and call it a day. And tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll uh, start getting into um, processing all this. All right, guys. Well, hope that was a bit of fun for you. Uh, just another day for a part-time recycler. And, uh, you know, uh, for those that are looking for e-waste themselves, you know, it, it's hard to get e-waste just as a, just, you know, randomly. You've really got to put in the work first, like, you know, set up a little small business and advertising website and all that and it does take time you know this stuff doesn't come around just overnight you know this is after a, a year of you know really working hard at advertising and getting your name out there and then you know um like this isn't a new customer or client it's it's an old client so i've picked up from them probably three times now and um you know and that's what it's all about. It's the repeat clients that uh, kind of will keep you in business um, because it's really hard to get new clients. Um, you know, you can advertise like I can go out and drop off flyers 
all week and only get one call, you know, and have dropped off 500 flyers. Um, so, you know, it's really hard to get new clients because there's a lot of competition out there. Everyone's looking for e-waste. It's not as easy as it used to be four or five years ago. There was a lot less people uh, recycling e-waste and advertising. And so, you know, it, you know, the, the few guys that were recycling were just getting loads, you know, but now it's getting harder. And especially getting it for, you know, free. But there still are companies out there that are charging to pick up. So that's one good thing, you know. Um, you know, uh, they're not really competition when they, you know, they charge money to take it all away, you know, whereas... You know, you can see that, you know, sure, there's work in here, but there is value here. And um, as a part-timer, um, you know, you know, it's, it's fine if you, as long as you're not relying on this stuff constantly to make a living. Uh, if you are trying to make a living out of e-waste, then you really got to work a lot harder and probably work out of a factory rather than working from home because... Yeah, it's, uh, you'll run out of room pretty quickly and you need things like a truck, you need a forklift, you need big steel bins and, you know, and, and most importantly, you need to hire somebody. So as you can imagine, this has taken uh, all up now. Uh, to get to this point, I've spent, you know, probably about four hours, four and a half hours, and I haven't scrapped one thing. So technically... I haven't made any money. In fact, it's cost me money. It's cost me four and a half, five hours time and fuel to go and get it. So I don't, I don't make any money of it until I start actually scrapping stuff out. And so that's, this is the problem. You've spent most of your day picking stuff up. If you don't employ anyone, then no one's back at base actually scrapping stuff out and, and making a bit of money. And even as we know, hourly rate is very hard to get a decent hourly rate. So if you're paying someone 25 bucks an hour to scrap for you, you know, unless you're getting high end stuff all the time, very hard to make money because, you know, once you start scrapping out monitors and stuff, even PCs, um, if they don't have much in there and nothing to resell, then, um, you know, you, 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 you're barely breaking even. If not, you're probably, most days, you're probably actually making a loss if you're actually having to employ somebody. And at the same time, while someone's scrapping at your uh, workshop, you're going out and picking up, you know? So you're not making money because you're just going out picking up and your scrapper isn't making money because he can't keep up to match his pay rate, you know? So unless you've got, like, volunteers that, you know, just doing it and want to scrap out stuff for fun, um, you know, it's really hard. It's a real balance. And um, the only way to really do it properly is to have a, a small factory where you can, you know, you can have a lot of bins spread out and you can start sorting things out and you start getting buyers for a lot of different commodities. Say, for instance, monitors. You wouldn't, you wouldn't waste your time scrapping out monitors. You'd be just loading them up in a cage or or stacking them up on a pallet and sending them out like that to a, a larger buyer. So you've spent, the only time you've spent on that monitor is in picking it up and bringing it back and packing it. Um, there's no scrapping time involved. And, and, and that way, you know, you can turn over cash like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's not easy to make a living, but, um, you know, as hobby, you know, uh, you, you can't beat it, you know. Uh, I don't know many other hobbies, you know, well, for me anyway, I, I, I used to have a lot of different hobbies, but, you know, this hobby gives me satisfaction in um, recycling and s saving the planet kind of thing, doing my bit for the environment. And it just gives me so many unusual things and it's really interesting. And, you know, I love, the you know, all, all stockpiling for gold recovery. You know, I love... Little things like that, little bonus things, a micro server, never seen one. Um, there's so many electronics that I've gotten that I've never seen before, you know. So it's just so, just a lot of fun for me. And, you know, I'm just uh, lucky that I, I don't have to, like, make a heap of money week to week to, um, um, you know, to make it to survive. <laughs> um, this is kind of like, well, it's a bit more than bonus money. It's, 
it is a bit of survival money because you know I use this money to pay the bills as well um, but um, yeah it's kind of like a labor of love and uh, you know uh, if you're interested if you like ripping stuff apart and that what I suggest is don't just go out there and look for a couple of places that will give you e-waste because you ain't hear from them again for another year or two years maybe not ever so it's a constant advertising constant getting out there and spreading the word and having a website so people can find you and you know without any other advertising they're just looking online they'll google e-waste recycling and if your name comes up you know you'll get some of those people and pick up some e-waste and you know sometimes you'll only pick up five or six pcs five or six monitors some keyboards some wire stuff like that um, other times you might just pick up machinery some big compressors and all that sort of stuff and other times you get just pcs like this um, but uh, yeah um, but don't don't think that it's actually this is an easy thing it's uh, it's very hard to get the the business to get the stuff and then it's also a lot of work to actually process the stuff you know I think this one here might actually be a server as well um, but yeah so you know scrapping e-waste and recycling e-waste doing it by hand it's not an easy thing so don't think of oh, this is easy money and all that it's not easy money it's hard work so unless you love this kind of stuff it's going to be hard to um, really be worthwhile for you you know you're probably better off just going to get a job as a truck driver or a forklift driver or a storeman or something like that because uh, at least you're going to be guaranteed of a constant income every week you're going to get paid you know um, when you're uh, setting up as a new business and you're um, in, in recycling business you know you can go for a month two months without really making any money so it's you know you, you kind of need a little bit of money behind you um, to sort of like um, to ride those low waves when you're not making money from scrap and um, and you're built and at the same time you're building clientele but after about three or four years of building clientele then even you know most clients will call you only once a year but it you know by the fourth year you know if they're all still calling you once a year then that you know that means by the fourth and fifth year you're actually quite busy you know like you're getting a call every week just from previous year clients you know and so it starts building up so then you're not really focusing too much on trying to get new class customers every new one's a bonus but your existing clients are supporting you throughout you know the years so it all adds up you know and and that's what it's about so you know um, your first year is going to be a struggle uh, if you're relying on making money out of it well then you've got to have a bit of money um, behind you first um, you know, I'm saying like, you know, you want to have 10000 in the bank before you sort of go out there and try and start your own business in e-waste recycling because there's going to be a lot of times you're going to have to get into that reserve money um, before you build enough clientele, you know. And even if you pick up the biggest pickup you can imagine, say you get 500 PCs in one day from one place, you have to hire a truck to bring it all back. You know, don't forget that those 500 PCs, you know, could take you a month to scrap out. So you're still not going to make anything for that month until you've scrapped them out. And then in between, you know, during that month, you know, you're probably going to get more pickups and you're going to bring more stuff back. And whilst you're out there picking up, you're not scrapping that original 500 PCs. And so, you know, it's a real balance in that act. And yeah, it's... Uh, just one of those things but you know that's just a little bit of a pep talk for you know I get a lot of guys asking me how to make money how to start up uh, e-waste business and you know you know I, I'm all, almost you know starting to get a little bit uh, worn out from answering so many questions through emails um, about it because you know the questions are kind of the same week after week after week and after a few years of answering the same questions you know um you know i've tried to you know sort of give some of the answers out in my videos to sort of like give you an idea so 
this is just another one of those little pep talks where I give you an idea on what um, the, you know the mindset is for a a small part-time you know e-waste recycler. Um, just you know, bear in mind that you know it's it's not the sort of thing you want to leave a job for and get into and think you know unless you've got money behind you and you really want to work at it and you're prepared and you've especially if you've got someone that can help you scrap. Um, if you're an older guy and you've got kids, you know you might have a son that's 16, 18 years old, um, probably sitting inside playing um, video games. You know, if you can get, you know, a kid like that excited about scrapping stuff out and, you know, or even picking stuff up for you. And, you and you know, it's good to have a young guy out in the streets and picking up, you know, e-waste from clients and stuff whilst you're home in your workshop scrapping stuff out. And, you know, in combination, I think you can do really well as long as you're not expecting to earn $500 a week straight off the bat you know it's going to take at least 12 months to even make it look like it's going to kind of be a business you know unless you've got half a million dollars to invest day one get yourself into a factory um, get your truck your forklift all your cages and bins and tools and everything set up and then um, you know have someone that's dedicated to go out there and advertise and market your business and at the same time, you making contacts with e-waste buyers and other recyclers that you can um, collaborate with and you can um, send off stuff that is, uh, you don't want to scrap out and so on. Um, you know, it's a big thing and yeah, and that can be really successful. You can turn into a, a multi-million dollar business, no problem, if you're... Um, if you're that way inclined, you know, but for most of us scrappers, you know, and for me, like I'm no longer in that m frame of mind where I'm trying to make a big business out of it. Um, when I first started, I assumed that I was going to be in a factory and, you know, by now employing two or three people and that, but I just don't want to go to that level. Um, I'm, I, in instead, I've stepped back and going into the part-time level, you know, where I'm just... Um, you know, doing it for part-time money and full-time fun. That's that's all that matters to me now is just to have fun and it just uh, gets me out of the house and just, you know, I can't wait to scrap all this stuff out. You know, I can't wait to open these, these ones and I know I'm going to get more next week. They're sitting there waiting for me, so I can't wait, <laughs> you know. Uh, so if you really love this kind of stuff, then by all means, put in the work, put in 12 months of you know, advertising and building a website and, you know, building, getting flyers made or however you can advertise wherever you are and uh, just keep building it and, you know, do it seriously and uh, professionally and, uh, you know, and, and you, you know, you might do okay out of it, you know, you don't never know. But anyway, guys, um, whew, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I've, had, I've done enough for today, you know, and um, yeah, I'm going to go in now and make some dinner and just relax and, uh, and um, set myself up for tomorrow morning and I'm going to come out here and start getting into it. All right, guys, well, have fun, keep scrapping, and I'll catch you next time.